fucks off to buy. I have no more fucks to give. My fucks have run a dry. I'd like to go fuck shopping, but there's no fucks left to buy. Hello. If you're just joining, I'm going to be a few minutes getting set up, and if you're joining from the future, you can just skip into the future a few minutes till I'm all set up, but I'm just going to be finishing up cutting some fabric tonight, and maybe start cutting some fleece for some bats, because I am so far behind on everything, it's not funny. But in the meantime, I hope you're having a good evening. As I slowly but surely lose my mind. And of course, I forgot to do the thing I said I was going to do, so... It is what it is. Purple Essences has 96% naturally derived ingredients oh. like aloe, honey, and avocado. Our sulfate-free collection smells incredible. And leave your hair touching soft and smooth. Go here. Again. What is with the bad thumbnails I'm getting? Like, I literally select a thumbnail of this fabric, and it just. And this one was my favorite because it was very velvety and moisturizing, but it did have sort of an oceany smell. And after letting it sit for a it while, just, mm, it pisses me off. We were fully glowed up, and it was time to rinse off. Damn it! Why does it keep doing it? Pisses me off. We did want to touch on the one other experience you can do, like in the lagoon, which are their underwater massages over by the retreat spa. We Ooh. weren't able to film our appointment, but it is one of their signature treatments, so we figured we should probably try it. And the way it works is they put you on a thick floating yoga mat for your arm back in the water. And while you're floating, they cover you with a warm, wet blanket so you don't get cold, and then massage you underneath the water. I mean, every so often, to keep the blanket warm, it's gonna eventually get cold in the air. They dunk you underneath. Not completely. Nice Our appointment ended up being while it was really rainy and really windy. That's crazy. Which made for an interesting juxtaposition of vibes above and below the water. Kind of like a mix of like moonlight and comfortable and the harshest environment imaginable. Moonlight, yuck, inhospitable. And they're done. Absolutely. Overall, we liked it. It's also like a new cool for everyone to get inside of it. All right. I think I got well over ten years ago. No, I think I got that in Texas before it became what it is. And sadly, Tyler fell prey to this as well. Still cute though. Let's see, only a little mustache left. Time for us to make our move to the steam room and dry sauna. So we hopped out, shall we? Rinsed off, and then took our GoPro into the steam room. Which was a questionable decision because I'm not sure we could see much of anything, but it was nice in there. Into the sauna next door, which was quite crowded, and then it was time to return from whence we came. Alright, it's starting to pour a little bit. Oh, yeah. So, good timing for us leaving the through the cavern. 
and our water door. So we could head over to a hidden gem of the Blue Lagoon's campus. All right, let's exit. How are you feeling? Salty. Now, the Retreat Hotel is not the only accommodation that the Blue Lagoon offers. There is also the Silica Hotel, which is a little bit further away from the action over here, which is slightly less expensive, but still pretty fancy overall. Oh, come on. It's nice and bright. The rooms at the Silica Hotel are a little less blackstone slabby and angular and a little lighter and softer. It might be less like full on looks, but it's very welcoming and cozy. I liked some of the decor, a lot of Nordic rocking chair. And I honestly also like that it was a little removed from all the action, still close by, but not in it. And it's only like a seven minute Not enough fabric on this piece. Well, I only cut a little bit, but still. Okay, that's gonna be there, I guess. And even though it would be our second soak of the day, we figured we have to try it out and give it a review as well. Daylight to work with. <laughs> so we're night bathing here. Though since this lagoon is also quite warm, it was plenty pleasant for us. Quite pissed off at um. Um. What is it? One of my secret shopper jobs today because they weren't clear on their location and cost me money and they won't reimburse me for it. Like they fucked up. And I know they fucked up and I didn't just fuck up and I'm feeling bad about it because it was right all the time to They gave me the address. It was 103 Stone Road. And it's a, it's a strip mall. It's got some things. It's got a dollar store and a couple other places. And the title of the, the location job wasn't Dollarama and it wasn't Giant Tiger. It was Tora. T-O-R-A. You click on the job. It is Torah. It has 103 for the address. You go there, you do the job. That's what I did all last year. A little job for bread or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so that's what I did, right? Did my job. So the same job comes up again this year. So hum and haw, yeah, I need bread. So I go get the bread. And... Do the job like I'm supposed to do at the location, 103 Stone Road. And I get jobs saying, no, I was at the wrong location. Like, no, I was at 103 Stone Road. See, here's the picture. Like, this is the location, this is the address you gave. No, they wanted uh, the giant tiger, not the Dollarama. Why do you want giant tiger? You, you were... You know, somebody checked all the jobs I did last year, probably about 10 of them, for that location. They were all approved, and they were all paid. Somebody looked at it and said, yes, it's the dollar store, because you have to take a picture of the front of the store before you go in. So that's what I did. And, no, they want the, the giant tiger. We've never had a thing for the dollar store. I'm like, well, it was the dollar store every other time before this. And they're like, well, it's not my fault you didn't know where to go. <laughs> Bitch, you the fuck it is? I went to, you Google, 103 Stone Road, not the real address, and the dollar store pops up, front and fucking center. It's not my fault you cannot be bothered to write the title of the location on the address. How am I supposed to know what the fuck Torah is? Am I supposed to cipher it or something? Torah actually means giant tiger, because if you cross the A, add a T, flip it upside down, and read it on the 8th March of November, then it says 
giant tiger. Like, how am I supposed to fucking know that? What did I expect to happen? Well, I expected to be paid for the fucking job I did at the location I was given the same way I have been all last year. The little nice said that said, we didn't mean the Dollarama. We meant the next, the door, like, the door next door. We meant that place, which has the exact same fucking address. And we didn't tell you what store to go in. So, you know, that was kind of our fuck up. Uh, here's your pay for the bread. And uh, next time we have the job, we mend over there. And they're like, you should have messaged us if you didn't know where. You have Circle K down the road as Kushtard. I'm not fucking joking. C-O-U-C-H-E dash T-A-R-D. That is three letters, two letters, away from fucking canceling me. It sounds like a fucking insult. And I mentioned to my friend, she's like, well, Kushtar is French, and it means, like, sleep long. And that's because it's open 24 hours. I'm like... That's still not the fucking name of the store! Sobeys? I can find Sobeys. Walmart? I can find Walmart. No. You put 2 or 3 Stone Road. Torah. I went to the Dollarama last year. It was the right location last year. Wrong fucking location. If you have a problem with the location I went to, I went to the Google correct address. And if you have a fucking problem with it, you should have put the name of the store you wanted me to go to. Jesus. Piss me the fuck off. And then I'm like, how am I supposed to know? And then... It's just back and forth, like, okay, but here's the screen grabs of the job and the name of the job and the location and the address of the job. Exactly as you posted it. So I went there exactly as you fucking said to go there, and I did it. I spent my fucking money. And I wasted my fucking time and gas. Don't turn around and tell me you wanted the door next door. If you wanted the Nordex or you should have named it by store. What am I supposed to do? Just fucking guess? It was right all last year. All last year it was a correct address. All last year. Don't come after me because you're so fucking incompetent. You can't be bothered to program it. To actually put the name of the store you want me to go to. <sighs> okay, baby. We're going to a spa theme park in Japan. Yes, we're going to Japan, and we're also going to a spa theme park. So what exactly is a spa theme park? It's not a super clearly defined idea, but it's basically just pissed off. Then I'm like, what if I go to the Giant Tiger one, someone else checks the job posting, and it's incorrect because, no, we meant the Dollarama. Even though, you know, like, I don't trust them anymore. Like, spending money in this economy? I don't have a job. I'm on LTD. It fucking pisses me off. And where there are hot springs, there springs forth a desire to soak in them. But this particular spa resort, Unison, has taken it to another level. Not only with the water park aspect, but with baths full of wine, green tea, coffee, and fish that nibble on your feet, amongst other things. So we decided that while we were in Japan, we had to stop by and try it out. Not only to get our first full on onsen experience, me. but also to see if there might be some hidden benefits in bathing in all of this these is all that. Like, yeah, I went to the wrong place, but that's because it was the right place every other fucking time. They're like, oh, you shouldn't have been paid for those jobs. Somebody check them. Somebody check the Google Maps. Somebody checked the photo I took. Someone checked the fucking receipt with the Dollarama right across the front. Don't come after me. 
If you don't want mistakes, put the fucking location. Put the name of the place on the fucking top. It's not complicated. I shouldn't be sitting here with a fucking Egyptian cipher trying to figure out where you want me to go. Because you can't be bothered to put the name of the store at the top. Piss me the fuck off. Ugh. Threw off my day. And with our booties thoroughly rattled, we arrived at Odomara Station a quick 40 minutes late. When we caught a bus that would take us all the way to the Yes, this is a shirt. I got it on sale. So, and I like the pattern. I thought it was really super cute. Is pretty high up in the hills, and the bus ride got oh, really fun and full of hearts and rainbows. And, narrow, and our driver was quite fearless. <laughs> but it was a good way to get pumped for the spa. So, from the outside, Unison kind of looks like a big beige hotel, but it's surrounded by some of the most beautiful mountains that we could finally appreciate because we weren't flying around the sides of them. It's so pretty out here. Where did you go? There you are. Rage rip. So to get into the park, we have to go up a few floors, past a series of lobbies, a giant like, yeah. gift shop, and a number of cranes. And then they're like, we will not tolerate disrespect to our employees. I said, damn, because I said, how the hell am I going to throw when there's some goddamn name of the store? You're not going to respect me. Bitch, you ain't respect. Don't make me go, Karen. Last thing I want to do. What I want is a fucking apology. Sorry, you really should. We really should have told you last year. Or put the name of the store. YouTube reasons, but you're supposed to get your onsen on in the new Get out of my love, what's wrong? <sighs> I don't know, I'm angry. You just want to go to bed. No, I'm not going to bed. Six different kinds of baths that I could try out. Four of which are filled with warm or hot. Ghetto's always got my back. He's the goodest boy. Right at the entrance next to the showers. This fully wood lined indoor pool, which is almost like a sauna because of how hot it is, and it smells really good. It smells. I don't know how else to say that. Kind of like piney? I don't know other. Mahogany? No, I don't think that. This large outdoor communal lagoon, and these personal porcelain bowls. It's like it's like their own like, personal like, teacup. It's like the teacup right at Disneyland, but like. Like I've just been paid for the fucking bread and told, yeah, um, don't go there anymore for this job. We meant the store next to it. I'd have been fucking fine. If it had been the first time I had gone to this store to do this job, and this was my, you know, no, we meant the store next to it, you know. I'd have grumbled, but I would have been fine because it would have been the first shot. But the fact that, like, it's been like this for over a year, and now it's a problem, and they're like, oh, it was never the store we wanted. It's not my fault. It was the right store all along. Like, I'm just so fucking irritated at people. I can't cut that because it's still the wrong color. Where are you? Where are you? Alright, let me open the cat window. I'll be right back! Besides smelling like a face mask, collagen is supposed to improve skin elasticity and aging by promoting cell I feel like the collagen is like counteracting the sun. It's like aging, 
anti-aging. You're really drinking Kool-Aid, huh? Well, I'm trying not to drink the pool water. Overall, I found the pools very relaxing, but the big winner of the Naked Zone was the view of the mountains. And though we had ventured to Unison mostly for the more unique experiences, I'm glad we got to get a peek into the Naked Zone to capture some of that thousands of years old traditional onsen experience. So now that we're about to open this Naked Zone to the public and people will actually be naked here, we're going to head out to the main area and see what's out there. Now when you first walk into the main part of the spa, they have like a foot and knee rinser. <laughs> is cut to the best of my ability right now, so I'm gonna fix these guys so I can get washed. Look for a tough sloth. Hey! Phil! I hurt my boob! Indoor section has one giant pool in the middle of it, which I call like the neutral watered communal. There we go. Alright. I'm gonna take these off. This is gonna be pain in the washing machine. I'd say it's pretty standard, so we wanted to move on to the more exciting waters. I want to show off my wetted chest hair to all of you, Nisan. Yeah. Could you leave? So first up on our list of specialty pools was the Dr. Fish Foot Bath, where a school of Gararufa fish, a variety of Turkish toothless carp, nibble, or I guess vacuum the dead skin off of your feet. Oh, these guys are ready for action. Now, I've seen this before online, and it seems to be pretty popular in many East and Southeast Asian countries. So we're rinsing our feet off before we go in, just to make sure that that's clean enough for the fish. I don't know what the criteria is to like get your feet chomped on, but I feel like you have like a little bleed down there. Go to the dead skin. That's because it's about onion. And that's a problem in the fish. So basically what you do is you sit at the edge of this tub and dangle your feet in. of 10 minutes. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, it's pretty good. I gotta go somewhere. Oh yeah? yeah? Some action shots? Yeah. This would be like shark week. We fish it, bite things up your feet. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. The doctor fish are incredibly tickle-inducing. I feel like really disheveled. sort of traverse your whole leg, and others just pick a spot and go at it. Oh, I like my feet. They really like my feet, and I think that's not a compliment. In particular, Tyler's right foot had a disturbing number of fish on it. My feet versus Sam's feet. But before his foot could be consumed entirely, our 10 minutes were up. See you next Friday, guys. I actually do think that the fish got some of the dead skin off of my toes, but I probably would have had a more thorough pedicure had Tyler not been hogging all of the carp. There's like not dead skin on my feet right now. There are chunks coming off and wearing that little like creep pool. So Unison has like a schedule of events, and at specific times they will pour coffee and red wine directly onto you in their respective pools. And we had a bit of time before the next coffee pour began, so we went to check out some of the smaller themed pools next door. The green tea and the sake bats. You're not supposed to drink the sake or the green tea. No, I don't drink any. So we went to the green tea bath first, which was pretty different from the green tea pool outside. Oh, it's really hot. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That one was just like normal spring water with the green tea bag, and this was like a scalding cup of tea. It doesn't smell like green tea. It does smell like green tea. I'm guessing they mixed this one with something else or just like diluted it a bit. But in general, go. the tea was just too hot for me. Okay, so, okay. so why am I going to bother washing this? Well, I'm going to fix its face. I don't have to worry about its face. I just want to put like one giant eyeball for the face, like a, a three-eyed eyeball sloth. Just, a, just an eyeball. What did I put? 
exfoliate and lighten dark spots, and bathing in it is actually a traditional geisha skincare secret. Mm -hmm. On the side of the bath was sort of like a giant sake drum, but I think the liquid in the bath was pretty diluted from the smell and feel of it. I don't know that you could like get drunk in here because there were a bunch of kids in here earlier. And it was just the side of the barrel was a true sake spigot. All right, so apparently this little nozzle here shoots out a little bit of sake, and that is riveted. So I'm gonna get, get up there. I'm gonna get up there. Face. You're not usually supposed to drink the sake straight out of this nozzle, but the Unison employees who were escorting us around encouraged us to try it. Don't Photoshop this. Did you get a little bit? No, I'm glad. Yeah. Put your hands out there so you can catch it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Right, yeah. Here's my sake bath taste test. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good sake. But after our sake taste test, it was time for the coffee bath. Oh, I almost saw it. You almost fell out of the camera. I'm hammered. The coffee bath itself is just kind of like very watery coffee, though it does smell and look pretty accurately coffee-ish. In terms of its skin benefits, there are some antioxidants in coffee that can help detox your skin, and the oh, caffeine yeah. actually combats Face is fixed. And I feel like also just forehead is next. You, you know, I don't know if it's placebo or what, but as soon as I walked in here, I was like, hey, I don't like the the band around the neck, but it is what it is. And what happens is that they prepare actual drinkable coffee in these giant buckets and then pull it out to the crowd. Is this from Oh, there's was a drink it. I just threw it on my face. With Beyond, you can feed your pet quality ingredients from our trusted sources. Go Beyond. Your skin changes constantly. That's why new Dove Body Wash now has millions of moisturizing micro droplets for 24 hours of lasting nourishment. New Dove Body Wash. No, it was good. So I tried to co-op some of Tyler's portion for drinking purposes. Oh yeah, that's coffee here. Okay, those guys are done. And after a decent amount of the crowd has tasted the coffee, they then proceeded to throw entire buckets directly at us. I mean, that is definitely an option for this. Slides and kiddie pools and um, waterfalls, with the added bonus that the view is pretty freaky. I mean, there is some, like, purples and stuff in here, so I'm not opposed to that one either. We flew into the children's area No. Well, let's see. Ooh, hang on. Yes, I can. Um, hmm. It's like coffee stuck in your mustache on your shoulders. Not really. Unfortunately, they didn't let us take no. our GoPros onto the slide, but I guess that did spare everyone from having to watch a very slow water slide shot, which I think was just our problem because other people were going down much faster, but nonetheless, we do have a second hmm. angle on this shot if you want to see it. No, this is too pink. Okay. <laughs> the slide, we went through like a hot springs grotto, which was mostly just a series of shallow pools, but you Ooh. can see the waterfall from behind it as well as this work. That is thing that not bad for rooms. closeness, but that's definitely a pink. I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for like a soft pink I can use. The water slide, where the Ooh. observation pools are. Ooh. Ooh, hello purple. These are 
Oh, a nice pearl would be good for you. Series of long, skinny pools. All right, and once again, a warm pool, very warm. Oh, hello. See the mountains as well as Unison itself. Yep, that one. There's Tyler, and there is the spa resort. I could use more pink, but I mean, you work with what we got, which we got is not a lot right now. Okay, that kind of matches right there with those colors. Oh, there's the other remote. Shit, I was looking for that for two days. Okay. Alright, I think I'm going to go with maybe these three. Four. Antioxidants for some anti aging and also some antiseptic properties for some anti acne. This is the right temperature. Exactly. I thoroughly enjoyed the red wine pool, though it did seem to be the most diluted of the specialty pools. For example, this giant wine bottle that's spraying my head is completely just water. But for the wine pour itself, they went for the real deal. <laughs> like with the coffee, they started off by pouring some red wine into your hands, which by wine standards was a pretty decent amount. Unlike Tyler who chugged it, I voluntarily threw it in my face, hoping for some quality anti-aging. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, I'm gonna hurt myself bad tonight. I keep stabbing myself. He was supposed to chug again. It hit him pretty quick. They concluded the show with another round of throw full bucket directly into our face. With the wine bath complete, I think we had actually hit all of the specialty pools. How are you? Some complimentary scrubs and slippers. All right, Ty, what's up next? We're eating buffet now. Lunch. Their buffet had a pretty good spread and was a nice cap on top of all that soaking. And afterwards, we caught the tail end of a park wide aqua workout class. We're having an aerobics class. 11 baths, lunch, and a workout, I think we had thoroughly investigated our spa theme park and were ready to head back to Tokyo. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, let's go home. It was really fun, but I need a nap. So we caught our bus back down the mountain, hopped on another bullet train, which you can really see the speed of here. We were home in a speedy 40 minutes. Well, from the train station, of course. All right, so we are back at our hotel room now, and um, I'm feeling pretty cooked. We had a great time at the Unisoon Spa Resort, but I feel like I've just been steeped for so long in so many different types of liquids that I just need a nap. Overall, <laughs> our experience at the spa theme park was very positive. Though I think the things I thought were the most exciting before I went were not actually my favorite parts. I thoroughly enjoyed the quieter parts of the park, like the naked zone and literally all of the amazing views of the mountains. One thing I thoroughly enjoyed, which we didn't include very much in the main part of the video, were the mascots. I like this one because it looks like he has cheese on his head. But they were kind of cutely speckled all over the park. Subtly, this is so sweet. Oh. All right. Oh, shit, I haven't done fuck that up. Oh, good. I think after this trip, we did feel sufficiently spawned. Whatever happens, but you want to make sure to move aside. a logic behind each pool as to why they would be good for your skin. I think we soaked in so many things that we're not going to be able to pinpoint like if our skin is better, like which one it was. Yeah. But it's sort of like the cumulative experience of just like, you know, sort of rolling around in hot water and feeling good and tired. It was quite a trek, so it'll be difficult for us to return, but if you're down for about 15 hours of travel, we'd say it's worth the trip. Or also if you're in Japan already. Maybe that. Thank you guys so 
much for watching. If you like that video, make sure to smash, smash that, that like button. button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to smash, smash that, that subscribe button. A big shout out to Vicky for watching. Thanks for watching, Vicky, and I will see you guys uh, next time. through the other side, so. just get lost in the Korean countryside, we were aided by our friend Hoju Sarah, who is a Seoul-based YouTuber who makes videos in Korean, as well as videos in English. She and her cameraman had been helping us produce our videos in Korea, as well as acting as our proverbial guides while we were there. I think it looks amazing. I kind of look like yoga. So they had let the park know that we were coming and that they were also coming with us. And to get to the park and back in one day, we had to catch a very early train. So we got up at 7 a.m. and jumped into a taxi cab to get to Yongsan Station. Now on the way, Tyler made friends with our cab driver and almost accidentally gave our camera to him. What is that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Oh no no. Thank you very much. I think Tyler was a little lost in translation. No no no. Thank you. No, no. <laughs> also had a pair of scissors in the car that he used to trim some of Tyler's leg hair, but unfortunately we have no footage of that. <laughs> what the hell? He did eventually give us our camera back and dropped us off at the train station. Overall, he was pretty cool. Ready for cheese? I'm ready for cheese. I'm ready for cheese. <laughs> cheese. Is this place even real? I don't know. <laughs> Okay. So you'll just get your makeup done. Yes. <laughs> you'll just barely finish your makeup. Yeah. How's it? Are you roasting me right now? So after wandering around <laughs> and grabbing some coffee at the okay. station, we hopped on the train and began our lengthy ride down the Korean Peninsula. Oh, this is so damn soft. <laughs> and a few more hours, our destination finally arrived. So we hopped off the train and got and quickly realized that we were not in the school anymore. Metaphorically speaking. Oh, really? Like off the train? Yeah. 
train. Something we also noticed almost right away is that the cheese theme show is not just contained with the That's any good. Not bad. No, come back here, my only piece of fucking lavender. Brings the cats, but there were a lot of cats. Oh my god, there's another one. Oh my god. But before we could really take off and explore the whole place, we had signed up to participate in a few cheese experiences. So, um, I think we should probably go and get that. Yeah. Yeah, we're running late. They're up like this hill. They're like somewhere over there. There. Yes. So we scurried across the pond to the experience hall. I had signed us up for experience course C, which included pizza making as well as two different cheese making classes. And we arrived just in time to wash our hands and the cheese party. And cheese! And that's great. Keep enjoying candy like a kid. But maybe stop going upstairs like one. Tasty Twizzlers gummies pressed. 60% less sugar. Because you're old now. Oops. 
seems to be holding, so that's good. Okay. 
it, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm oh, yeah. I found this task quite difficult on account of the blustery day. Yeah. Am I beautiful? I did an okay job. I did a very medium job. I just feel like this is just as fashionable as I can get, really. Yeah. But then it was time to taste test our creations. <laughs> takes a bite of something and the wind like just bursts up in your face like this is the best pizza ever okay it's quite good <laughs> i'm gonna really i'm gonna have to come out this is really good i'll eat the other half <laughs> this is awesome we did a great job we did an excellent job but before we just inhaled the pizzas can i come in there Or at least, you know, it was worth the additional four-hour train ride from Seoul. All right, so now that we have eaten some of our pizza, we will probably eat the rest of our pizza and then, like, explore a little bit. Sounds good to me. Yeah, you just want to finish. I'm going to keep eating as we do some more. <laughs> so we set off around the park's circular path to investigate all of the different buildings and attractions. What is going on up there? Is that, like, Sound of Music or something? They are playing Sound of Music. Music? There's a lot of Sound of Music stuff going on. So I feel like it's possible. Yeah. It's cute, though. It's very cute. But instead of going up the hill, we decided to start with the right side of the park. I right, let's go this way. To the cheese park. There is a place in my heart for cheese. There were actually two cheese hearts. One that was sort of holy. Is this good? Is this cute? And one that was served on a very large plate with utensils to match. Cue montage of me attempting to make cheese heart puns. My heart would be... Blue cheese without you? No, I don't like blue cheese. You are Buddha to me. This went on for a while. Quick, Sarah, uh, give me a type of cheese. If you leave me, I come in there. Oh, look, that was really good. Has, has it been preloaded this whole time? Yeah, I had it on the Oh, okay, good. You could have just lied. There you go, okay. Hey, and with the heart, that works well. Okay, yeah. cool. You, you give me a high five on that one? Yeah, I gave you a uh, one for seven. Yeah. <laughs> Directly across from the inflated cheese heart was another building. So there's a random laser tag just over there, but it's not cheese themed. It's, it's an interesting addendum to the cheese theme park. Yeah. They're like, we have giant uh, heart cheeses and then we have laser tag. BB gun shooting as well. Brings a new meaning to dangerously cheesy. Oh my god. <laughs> Please walk off screen. You, you can leave too, Sarah. That's. Why are you here? <laughs> Though we didn't have quite enough of a quorum for a good laser tag match, we did go in and check it out. Okay, this is like the laser tag course. And Sarah was right that it wasn't really cheesy laser tag. If any of you guys say it's more like Wild West themes, it's kind of cool. But it did give us a good view of the marquee wheel of cheese across the park. I like how like the giant wheel of cheese is just looming. It's like he's trying to eat the sound of music kids over there. We do look like a giant, like, Pac-Man or Pac-Man? Yeah. So after that, we continued up the path to a large clock tower that had fake Swiss guards standing outside of it. A la the Vatican. He looks a lot like John Cena, doesn't he? Oh, I see it. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Inside of the clock tower, they had a trick eye museum or like forced perspective vignettes for people to take pictures with, including a cheese up scenario. Do I have a way? Honestly, no. <laughs> but I like the idea. I don't know why there's a goat there. I couldn't really figure this one out. Is this better? It's goat cheese. One, there was like a painting come to life scenario. Oh, so that one looks quite good. Monet. Far away from the painting, close to all. I don't think that's Monet. A Ferrari zipping through the countryside scene. Look at you. What are you, sponsored by Nike? <laughs> and a Venetian gondola ah, sticking nice. out of the wall. I wish I was a happy person, but I'm not. Behind the Trick Eye Museum, there was a pretty quiet courtyard that had a few little cafes, a large empty stage, a small hotel, and case. Sarah was stone cold sober when 
she dropped the cheese into my shoe. We did eventually get to taste the cheese, though. Mmm, that's quite a sharp cheese. And it was quite delicious. That's a good cheese. It would go well with one. It's true. Wait, also, can you put in the background? After the adult area, we followed the path back towards the center of the park. But instead of turning down to the Cheese Palace, which by the way, I think is mostly a food court, we turned uphill to the Sound of Music Tempo, where we found some large alpine horns. Yeah, it looks quite a suggestion type. <laughs> and a stationary rickshaw. See, it's all cycle. We did eventually reach the top of the hill. <laughs> are not really cheese related, but they are sort of Swiss adjacent, so maybe that's why they're so prominently featured. I think we have two missing. I think the oldest ones are missing. So from there, we continued onwards to the much anticipated cheese slide. I think this actually does make it more of a theme park. Yeah. They do have like a sort of roller coaster. Can I get on? Yeah. scaring away the rest of the line, I hopped on the slide. Bye. See you later. Oh my god, it's vibrating my butt! Oh my god! Wait, it's kind of fast! It's kind of fast! Ow! Why is it so loud? It's actually quite a lengthy ride, and it's made up of a bunch of small metal rollers that clank around and do a number on your booty. Oh my god! his hand, or rather, he's behind at the slide as well. Is he going faster than me or slower? I think I was going faster. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Ooh, my butt's still shaking. Right? And to complete the tripod, Sarah, who had been exploring elsewhere for a moment, rejoined us at the slide and plopped right on. Yeah, this is what happens when cheese goes through your large intestines. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't think that when Sarah dressed to match the cheese, she expected digestion imagery to come out of it. I was trying to go at the speed and it didn't work. How's your butt feeling? Oh, my pants are quite wedgy. Though we all did enjoy the slide, I think that it could have benefited from having like a tray to sit on rather than just having legs straight onto rollers, but it was definitely a good addition to the park. There's a ride. If there's a ride with a, a theme, it is a theme park. This is. Uh, people kept smacking their heads on it, I think, because they put oh, this on it. Yeah. yeah. Behind the slide, there were a few pastures with goats in them. What's up? Hey, buddy. This guy's coming down. He wants to hang out. I think that's it. Hello, ma'am. <laughs> Whose udder seemed pretty full and ready for more cheese making. These goats want to get milk, man. Three squeezes and I will drain you. <laughs> Hi, hi, Dwight. So with the backside of the park investigated and our backsides raw, it was finally time to visit the marquee cheese-shaped building. <laughs> It's like a watchtower. It was actually quite nice 
up here because not only did we get to hang out in the cheese. I'm in the cheese. I am one with the cheese. But we also got to get a bird's eye view of all of the different buildings we had visited. Far over there depressed. is the Trick Eye Museum. I am and just a little depressed. The, like, maturing cheese room. That was like one of the experience rooms. And then there's the Cheese Palace. Cheese Palace. And then that is, I guess, Inshul proper. So huh? that's what's in this giant Pac-Man. After our trip off the watchtower, it was almost closing time for the cheese park. Right, I think everything's closing up right about now. Yeah. I think it's time for us to head back to the station and catch our train back. Our four-hour train back. Uh, I hope I have eaten enough cheese to sustain me <laughs> that four-hour trip. Yeah. <laughs> theme park of Vita saying goodnight and headed back to the train station. Whoa! The wind! In my hair, I feel so alive! Alright, um, we are- You can see where she's in Caroline. Ah, <laughs> ah. Alright, so we are done at the cheese theme park and we are heading back to Seoul now, on the train. Do we have cheese in the train? Uh, too much cheese coma! And because it was a Sunday, and apparently many people vacation for the weekend in the countryside, the train going back into Seoul was so none of us got to sit together. But eventually, a few hours later, our stop was <laughs> and shockingly hungry. So we stopped at a cafe nearby for a late dinner, where Sarah thought it would be fun to employ our initial cheese. Straight into the dish, man. Oh, it's melting in. And though it was perhaps a bold move for our intestines to add even more cheese into our systems, <laughs> I thought the dish was pretty tasty. And Sarah agreed. <laughs> And with that, I think it was finally time for us to head back to our hotel and call it a day. All right. So cheese theme park. Okay. So that was our trip to Imshul, South Korea. I think the cheese park definitely exceeded my expectations in a couple of areas. Though it wasn't quite six flags, there were a fair amount of different attractions, and the grounds were pretty expansive. I also didn't know that much about the history of the Imshul area, actually quite cool that cheese is like so much their thing. All cheese, all business. Who says that? That's actually what they say in Imsol. Yeah, that's Imsol's town bottom. Now that said, it's definitely far. And once again, it's mostly geared towards children. There is like that one back area that seems to be more for parents, but the rest of the park is more like a playground. Regardless, I had a lot of fun at the cheese park. And though we did get to taste a fair amount of cheese, which I was excited about, I think my favorite part was actually the scenery. Not only was it cool to see a lot of the Korean countryside from the train, the cheese park itself is actually really pretty, with some seriously pastoral views. So I'm not sure if we will be returning to the cheese park, mostly because we live a 14-hour plane ride away, but if you live nearby, it's definitely a fun place to check out. If you're gonna ride the slide, bring some full length pants. My cold. Thank you guys so much for watching, and once again, a big thank you for watching us get to the cheese. If you like that video, make sure to smash that like button, and if you want to smash that subscribe button here on my social media handles, and a big shout out to Soapy for watching. Thanks for watching, Soapy, and I will see you guys next time. missed but not all of it so hello friends and welcome to another video this is part two of our staying in every hotel on the vegas strip video where we stay in every casino mega resort on the las vegas strip and review the room vibes and activities at each one <laughs> We stayed in every hotel on the west side of Las Vegas Boulevard, from the Four Seasons all the way to the Strat. 
<laughs> and in this episode, we're taking on the east side. From the Sahara on the north end to the Tropicana all the way down here. It's going to be a hell of a ride to the finish line, so gird your loins. <laughs> East side, east side, I say. Welcome. A reminder on a couple of disclaimers. We are working off of this list of hotels, so we have 14 to cover in this video, and we're going to be hitting two to three hotels a day and only spending the night in the last one, while other members of our team stay in the others. Also remember, we got taken for a ride by Johnny Rockets. We got three grilled chicken sandwiches, $70. So that's Vegas price. That's crazy, right? So we are mad at them. All right, with that, let's go. This is a momentous moment, guys. We are crossing over to the other side of the strip. My hair was completely crazy. And day one of our second week on the strip, we're calling it the Encore Day. Because it's part two, baby. This is the Encore video, and the hotels for this day are the Sahara, Wynn, and Encore. With an unfortunately long trek in between. Let's do it. It feels different over here. The grass is greener. The pavement is grayer. We started the day off with the Sahara. The shade to the strap. The yeah. strip starts here. That is true. <laughs> On this side of the strip, there are a lot of older properties. Oh, wow. Feels good. So the Sahara can't claim the title of the oldest. Fucking whore! It's a long time Vegas classic. It opened in 1952 as a Moroccan themed hotel and was popular with the legendary Rat Pack in the 50s, as you can see by these classic photos all over the place. It has clearly been redone a few times since then. Oh, nice. It reopened as an SLS hotel in 2014, and for any fans of The Hills, there was a storyline where Heidi almost moved to Vegas to work at this hotel. And then it was rebranded as the Sahara again in 2019. stands is that it is bright, nicely remodeled, new feeling and clean, but a little on the small side. sized casino floor, there's a very bougie Starbucks, a few restaurants, and notably the Magic Mike striptease show. Ooh. They also have Jose Andres' Bizarre Meats here, which is one of those experiments where they serve you a hot dog. like an olive, but it's just a sack of water. It was closed the day we were actually staying at the Sahara, but we did return a few days later for our upcoming Celebrity Chef restaurant video. We won't spoil the review, but it was crazy and crazy expensive. This is literally me by the woods. This is how you do it. Back to our actual Sahara day, we decided to grab brunch at Zephyr's Cafe. Tyler's family has never been able to do it. Which I wanted to like because it had a late brunch, but the food wasn't the best, so I would not recommend. <laughs> That was concealed behind the flower. That was such a surprise. <laughs> now, the big hurdle of the day was that we had to walk from the Sahara all the way down to the Wynn and Encore. It's going to be over a 30 minute walk. That's boogie. We did this at the end of part one, but this walk was actually the longest one of our entire trip. Goodbye, uh, happening. Goodbye, Sahara. Out of the Sahara into the desert. As the wind is closer to Treasure Island than it is to Circus Circus. Once again, no one asked us to do this, but we were determined to traverse the strip on foot. Unfortunately, 
because of some construction on this side, we actually had to cross back over to the west side for a bit of it. Back to the Avenger Dome! Circus, circus. Take us back. And because of the July heat and sun, this walk was just as punishing as it had been the day before. That the encore. So, we're going there. But we did find ourselves a little oasis in the desert in the form of this Ross Dress for Less. It's a new here. I think I love it here. Imagine if you shot that. It says Ross Vegas. Yeah. Viva Ross Vegas, people. I mean, it's kind of amazing, right? I love it. I love it. And the AC inside Ross Vegas gave us that final burst of energy we needed to get to the win. Go. Go. Beat the heat. Beat the heat. A second wind, if you will. Wow. You're as good as the Probably. Honestly, probably. Now, the Women Encore are essentially two separate towers of the same hotel. They are sister hotels that share an expansive common area at the base. And though there is some delineation between whether you are in the win side or the Encore side, this right here seems to be kind of like the line, the border. They're basically the same hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler and I have stayed here before, but I can't remember which one we were in. And though I don't think they have a distinct theme, the inside is very luxe and fantastical, floral and red, with a lot of atriums, gardens, a garden full of giant balls, and one higher balls. A very large pool complex, and huge decor items like these slowly rotating giant umbrellas. Yeah, look how pretty this is. In general, it's a more expensive hotel. I'm a little nervous to pose there, because that's like the high limit tables, but there's some cool peacocks. And it's definitely trying to cater to a deep-pocketed clientele, with a lot of fancy restaurants, famous nightclubs, and pretty well-known spas. We didn't really want to try and film, like, in the spa, because that would be hard to film. You're not supposed to film in there other maybe people, what's going on, etc. So instead, we decided to get an IV drip at this Nutri-Drip place, also on the spa level. Yeah, we talk. I did. Yeah, we talk. Okay. Basically, it's an IV drip full of vitamins and fluids that you essentially take recreationally. I guess that's more than this. Oh, great. I've never done it before, and it's pretty expensive, but I think it's perfectly situated for Vegas, because I'm pretty sure the ideal use case is for helping cure symptoms of being hungover, which we were not, but we figured we could do a little replenishing. Oh, you break and stuff. There's the games. 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 It did maybe feel a little more energized afterwards, but it mostly just made us feel cold. <laughs> So I don't think I would recommend this. But when in Vegas, I suppose. All right. There is also an extremely bougie assortment of shops in the Wind Slash Encore that we usually like to just walk through and look at. It's all very nice. Very nice. We did grab a quick bite at the Earth Cafe back here. Earth Cafe is an LA staple, but it fits in really well with the vibe at the Wind. At first I thought Tyler's latte art was worse, but is it a heart and a coffee cup? I think it is. Okay, yours is better than mine. Mine is a flower. My favorite thing to get is their Moroccan mint tea latte, which I would recommend. <laughs> Beyond that, in terms of activities, we did stop by their lakeside restaurant for dinner for a good view of their Lake of Dreams interactive show. Unfortunately, this was kind of a miss for us. The restaurant was very expensive, and though we didn't explore the menu that much, we got the exact same thing for boring. We didn't love what we got. It kind of tastes like good tasting cute food. And the show itself, though kind of cute, is pretty short and is basically just a huge animatronic toucan singing Lady Marmalade. Everybody got so I wouldn't recommend this spot. There are a lot of other restaurants in the Wynn and Encore where the food is a lot better. That's a fair bit on the two hotels' amenities and attractions, so now, on to the rooms. Come on. <laughs> First up is the Wynn. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, the Wynn Hello, random person who jumped in tonight, or... <laughs> Hope you're having a good night. I'm just working on a couple of things while watching some YouTube videos. Tonight is Lavender Bats with My Little Pony. Because we're using up the fabric we got right now. And... Okay. And kind of a theme for the day... Oh, oh my god, The pillows were also giant. A little crooked, but... Yeah. Hmm. Don't know why. So, love the room, love the bathroom. Wow! Where is it? Particularly love the sealed toilet paper. 
However, if we roasted the Bellagio last week for having a rotten box of food in the mini fridge, we can't ignore the fact that we did find a random sandwich that was not ours in the mini fridge here. <laughs> Mini it did not seem super old, like it didn't smell bad. <sighs> How are you doing tonight? It was there. Random sandwich. Just gonna put that out there. Random sandwich. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. the core of my mom, which is where we were gonna be sleeping. Ooh. Whoa! Dude, it's huge! Yeah, look at this nighttime view. This is so freaking soft. It was a little less ornate, and where the wind was warm toned, it was more silvery and cool, mirrored and square. Yeah. It's rectangular. Yeah, yeah, yes, lots of rectangles, yes. I hurt my finger yesterday in a garden, and I'm trying very hard not to stab myself with one of these needles. Because, you know, that's how I go. The pillows were a little smaller than the ones at the window. They don't put a random sandwich over there. No sandwich. They did also have sealed toilet paper over here, so I was pleased. I'm happy as the period. Very happy. Yeah. Tyler will be having two small pillows, and I'll be having two large pillows. Ah! What a... Awful deal. <laughs> Things you do for love. So sandwich notwithstanding, the wind slosh encore. Expensive, but pretty nice. Now, day two here was a long and eventful one, spanning four hotels that I had cannot get over how nuts and soft this fabric is. Oh, it's gorgeous. that we were the most excited about, this which we were actually here. specifically dressed for, which was Guy Fieri's restaurant at the lake. So, you guys go for that? That's uh, why we're going to we're dressed like guy. So we're calling day two the road to Flavor Town. Flavor Town. Yeah. Road to Flavor Town. And you know what gets stuck, maybe. Also, I do want to quickly apologize to Guy Fieri for saying his name 85 different ways in this video. As someone who also has a difficult to pronounce name, I'm sorry for letting the team down. We started off our day on a slightly different, though still Italian note, with the Venetian and the Palazzo. Mm, Venetian's gorgeous. Which are right next to the Wynn and the Encore, and are another pair of sister hotels that are also kind of one giant continuous hotel. And we have actually stayed in both of them. As the name implies, they have a general Renaissance Italy theme. Wow! Look at the ceiling! Mm -hmm. Venice specifically, of course, with frescoes, canals, statues, Ooh. fountains, marble columns, Give me a thumbs up if you're vibes. having a so-so or okay or good night tonight. <laughs> or if you're not a bot, both are appreciated. To be frank, ornate as fuck. Let's hit the rooms up front here, so then we can move on to some with the Palazzo room up first. Come on. Oh, it's me. The Palazzo and the Venetian are sweets. Oh, scary. That's pretty nice. So they're all a pretty good size. This is the exact kind of room that you can step in. That's really the color here. As I've done before. They are good. My the only way like is that I could use a little more theming up here, especially since the downstairs is so good. Listen, just like they have race car beds, this could easily be a gondola. They filed this side like a gondola. Things could be good. The Venetian room was also big. Oh, come on. It was maybe a little more themed. Look at this like balcony I have. Well, almost like a little bit like Romeo and Juliet balcony scene. Yes, it's giving more of that. Obviously, that's not Venetian, but it's. And there were some marble and gilded vibes, but I feel like mm, they sad rubble. I wish that the bed was gondola shaped. But the rooms were certainly sizable and serviceable. Doesn't feel the most modern or the most themed. I had her shirt. Now back out to the Venetian and Palazzo common areas. There's a lot to do in here. Huge casino floors, lots of restaurants and bars, multiple levels of fountains and shops. Tyler got broke into taking someone's picture. Oh, she doesn't like it. She's gonna make him take another one. While we were there, there was a conference in town. <laughs> they must be on the conference right now because there's more people down here than I've ever seen in my life. And it seemed like a lot of the attendees were staying at the Venetian. I'm doing a pretty good job now. You are here, but you're not going to walk through the for our activities, we headed over to the Grand Canal Shops, which is a mall inside of the hotel, which is also heavily themed. I think to look like St. Mark's Square in Venice. I love the little building. I miss St. Mark's Square. It's gorgeous. I love the big sky. Yeah. They also have performers in Renaissance garb. Performers. Performers. And to put it over the 
top, they also have gondolas you can ride up and down the canal that runs through the whole thing. And gondoliers who will serenade you as they scald the water. <laughs> They know it's mostly Frank Sinatra. Besides that, I generally enjoyed the gondola. It's a bit short, and they don't go anywhere you couldn't also just walk to. Check out the ice bar in the canal shops. Oh my yeah. exclusive as they have these things in a few different Vegas casinos and also in plenty of places outside of Vegas. Cute model shot. But I have always been curious. Oh my god. It's actually cool. It's like a fridge. Oh my god. That's so cute. A bar inside of a giant casino. I mean, block. Right here. Where everything inside is made of ice. I hope to get one of these done tonight. Just one. And I'll be good for me. And then we go over on the other tomorrow night. You can't set your drink directly on the tables as they will just fuse together. All that said, I liked it in there. It was pretty invigorating, kind of like a little bit of cryotherapy to re energize us. We only stayed for a little bit and we did not take a shot through the ice boobs. A nipple ice boobs, wow. But we did sit on the scorpion throne. Please let me know if anyone understands that reference. Okay, I'm officially freezing. Let's go. After the ice bar, we took a little time to defrost our camera. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. The camera just got fogged up. Yes, it actually kind of froze. I can't get into the bathroom if they warm it up. <laughs> and then we mm -hmm. headed back out into the heat to oh, resume our trek to our next hotel. Here, uh, a little further down the street. Now, Harris is the start of a few casinos in a row here in this kind of central part of the strip that are situated right on the sidewalk. They get a lot of foot traffic through them since you can either walk outside of the heat or cut through the front part of their casino floor and enjoy some cover and AC. So I've walked through Harrah's plenty of times before, but never really explored it too much. I can't get the body again. You know And after taking a longer look, overall, it seems kind of neutral. Not too shabby or dilapidated, but not new feeling either. There are some things to do, but not a lot. And there isn't much of a theme to be sniffed out here. The theme at this point I would best describe as purple. Yeah. It's kind of purple. And that's the only through line we could really figure out. The nondescript theming carried through to the room as well. As inside, it was pretty beige and gray. In terms of base necessities, it actually seemed pretty okay. The bathroom was nice and clean, and the bed was fine. And there was also this oddly large lamp. Wow. I like that lamp. Which was at least somewhat interesting. This lamp is taller than me and also taller than the window. I looked it up, and apparently Harris is supposed to be Mardi Gras and Carnival themed, but I feel like they could at least be a little bit more lively about it. Come on out. Get out. Get out of here. In terms of our activities at Harrah's, they have a couple of spots in here that we needed to hit for our Celebrity Chef restaurant video. We won't spoil our review of them too much, but I will give you a general overview. It smells amazing. First off, we went to Bobby Flay's Bobby's Burgers. There he is. Damn plan. Which is kind of like a slightly more gourmet Five Guys. So it's basically a burger just with a bunch of chips on it. The burgers were pretty good, but a little heavy. Oh my god. That did sound crunchy, I'm not gonna lie. The crunch heard around the Harrah's. So we were already a bit weighed down when we got to our second celeb chef joint, Buddy Velastro's Pizza Cake. Time for more carbs and more sugar and carbs are sugar, so more sugar and also sugar. Cake me, boss. Now, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Buddy Velastro, aka the Cake Boss, is taking over Vegas. He has a restaurant in the Venetian, which I passed on because I wanted to move make sure we got cake, and pizza cake seemed more cake-oriented. Do the name's pizza cake supposed to be like pizza cake? Oh, 
but joke's on me, because he has not only a couple more restaurants, but also these cake vending machines all over the place. So I could have gotten a Cake Boss cake in many different places. I've never had cake like this before. In terms of pizza cake, weirdly, our favorite thing was the cannoli. How's it going over there, cannoli boy? As it was, the tits. Bigger than I was Welcome. And after our decadent lunch of burgers, fries, and cake from Bobby and Buddy, I need to walk it off. Walk it off and okay, some beans. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? There's the beef. There's the beef. Everybody gets a bath in the bead bucket. It opened in 1959 as just a music free, and since then has been rebranded, renamed, and That's so many beats. I'll save my little bean baby bean bags for other occasions. That's, that's a good way. And there we go. Keep it. The beanie butts at the beanie back of the bean babe. And inside, it's pretty bustling, since the casino floor kind of serves as a throughway for people to get to the Link Promenade next door. They have a couple more Buddy V restaurants in here, as well as this water massage pod. I am terrified of and will never do. The room is also a little futuristic and minimalist feeling, but certainly not a bad room. The bed was nice and big. Oh, my back just cracked. Oh, yeah? Mm. Good or bad? Um, I think good. And the bathroom, though small, I'm standing in the shower to get this shot. Felt pretty new and clean. My biggest gripe with the room with the link is that their furniture pieces are all built into the wall. Yeah, the desk is pretty minimal. Which isn't inherently a problem, but with both the bed and the long desk, there is the tiniest crack between the furniture piece and the wall. And at the end of this day, when I took my wedding ring off to go to sleep, I lost it back here. And I think it's behind one of those things, and I don't think we're ever going to see it again, but we're going to try. And after searching high and low on the morning of day three, I resigned myself to the fact that the ring was just lost at the link forever. If anyone wants to try their luck at room 3121 at the link, let me know. It might be there. But a few hours later, Paul, one of the link staff members, Ooh, that's it. Oh my god, you're amazing. Fished my ring out from behind here with his hook. Upset of all upsets, the ring has been found. <laughs> the engineer slash maintenance guy is my fucking hero. So, my ring was saved. On one hand, Link, I don't like your desk, but I do like your Paul. Okay, he's great. Now, back to our tour of the link on day two. How are you doing? I'm pretty tired. All right, we cannot fall asleep no. because we have three more things to do. I briefly mentioned the link promenade earlier. Almost done. Really Just need to attach the head. <sighs> it's an open air, pedestrian only street with lots of restaurants, bars, and stores. I also see a fountain in the few marquee attractions. They have the Museum of Selfies, which is an Instagram museum, which was kind of cute, but I'm not really sure it's worth going to, as we walked through it in about 20 minutes. Like a prophecy foretold, Guy Fieri will alight from heaven above with his frosted bulbs. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, let's, I'm glad you chugged that coffee. And then they also have a <laughs> zip line and a huge Ferris wheel called the High Roller. Clocking in at 550 feet tall, the High Roller is the largest observation wheel in North America. And it sends you around its circumference in a large clear pod with a bunch of other people. Showcase out. There is a uh, Phoenix Purple. <laughs> I generally liked it, as it was cool to get a high vantage point on the strip from right in the middle of it, but it takes a while to get up there. It takes 30 minutes to get all the way around, and it's been seven and a half minutes. Wow. It feels like two hours. <laughs> and then you're only at the top for a short while. I know that's how Ferris wheels work, but that's just how I felt. Maybe I was just anxious to get to our final stop of the day, the one we've all been waiting for, and the one Tyler and I were dressed for, Guy Fieri's restaurant inside of the link. I will say it smacks. Oh, you look looking so cute. Now to Tyler and I, who are decently well-versed Food Network fans, <laughs> Guy Fieri is king. He's a style icon. Definitely cute. We decorated for him during Matt Pat's charity livestream a couple years back, so we love him. And let me tell you, the vibes inside his restaurant are immaculate. Thank you. 
and the menu is chock full of lots of very flavorful All right, dishes. there we go. Like I think we're done. Nachos. I get one done tonight, which is better than none done tonight. Try a pile of nachos. Tyler's beef dip sandwich. Amazing. My turkey burger. I don't know how to approach this. The most intimidating piece of food I've ever attempted to eat. Like the sword of the stone. The <laughs> and scalper. We are going to go in a bit more depth on his restaurant in our Celebrity Chef video. But my only real criticism, I just wish the restaurant was called Flavor Town. It's got here. I just feel like it's right there. How about some laser sensitive? Give it a shake and knock all the fuzzies off that are cut. And with all that distance traveled, we started off at the Encore. <laughs> all of those rooms seen and all that food eaten. Three celebrity chef restaurants, the Link Promenade, the Museum of Selfies, the fucking Ferris Wheel. We finally called it a night. Thank you, Facebook. But we stay frosty. I forgot about the ice. Truly, truly a marathon day on the strip. Now, day three on this side there we go. Of was a pretty well done. Day, though not quite as bad as the day before. I might put this one online, I'm not quite sure yet. But uh, yeah, what do you think? It took me a while to figure out what to call Pardon the lighting. Yeah, well done. Alright everyone, you have a good night. See you tomorrow. Maybe.